So in the last video, I used the Flower of Life, the Seed of Life, the 666 to draw Anantashesh and the Lotus Flower of Life coming out of his mind. Um, now I'm going to explain it. So first I'm going to draw the sacred circle, which this whole thing's based on. This one intersecting circle, representing Manasatara or the equator for us. Because these lotus worlds manifest, there's the greater being Manasatara, and then there's all the micro versions, being all the other Vashas and islands and Dvipas. So joining up the lotus petals, we get the hexagon, again the six. This is all about the golden ratio, how God sees in the ratio to one to 1 1.6. Everything in the universe conforms to this 1.6 golden ratio. So we have the... Out of the mind of Ananda Shesh comes the golden ratio. To build the universe, he's going to need uh, the five elements, which is represented by the cube, six-sided cube. Four gross elements and ether space within the cube. Four elements and space. The ether is conforming to the flower of life, the 666. The Ouroboros, the snake of life, guarding the flower of life, tree of life, seed of life. So that's the five elements coming from the six. We then actually have the four directions, but I've not put that on because I want the drawing to show something particular. Uh, now I'm drawing the southern path of the sun, the tetrahedron, the solar plexus symbol, the southern path representing the three modes of material nature, the masculine. Now I'm drawing the feminine three modes. So we end up having a sixth star, which is the sacral chakra, which is the moon, the north. So the moon is moving from birth to death, from mother to death. Moving back and forth like this, uh, all based on the equator. So now I'm going to draw the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. Trop so the other way around, Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. These tropics are a lotus leaf, a flower leaf in and a flower leaf out. And that scale matches real maps and I'll show that in a minute. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw in, it's all set to the main circle, so I'm just going to draw in a lotus leaf, one of these leaves, and that is where the Tropic of Cancer lies, being the northern path of the sun and the moon, which becomes inverted and becomes a center, which I'll explain soon. So I've drawn the Tropic of Cancer, now I'm drawing the Tropic of Capricorn, which is, like I said, a lotus leaf, a leaf seed distance away from the equator. That's Tropic of Capricorn. I think I'm just going to show the, uh, just send it to the main circle because I adjusted it for that. Remember, everything's all conforming to the seed of life. I'm not drawing in extra things. So there's the seed. There's the seed thickness of the petal. So I just skipped ahead. Um, finished, well, finished dish. Um, you've got the outer. This represents the outer water of our Earth. You have the northern central hemisphere, the Tropic of Cancer. You have the equator. You have the Tropic of Capricorn. And then beyond here, beyond the water, you have the ice. The cold, reptilian ice.
So now I'm just showing the 666, where they get the 6 from, the 666 from. This is the 666, the number of the beast. Uh, also, so the 666, like I said, represents the golden ratio. Um, there's also a 9 in there too, which gives us the 9 planets. To create the universe, and then to chase means his electromagnetic lotus energy, his um, divine ratio, seeing in the 1 to 1.6 ratio. And he's the four elements, and he's the sun, the moon, and all the other planets, and the stars. This is the zodiac going around the outside. Just like I showed in the other videos, it all represents the north, south, east, west. Bumandala, the sacred disc sacred circle um, so yeah this all is uh, Anandashesh's vision, Krishna's vision is 1 to 1.6 everything conforms to this 1.618 it actually is to get the 1.8 it's either 2 9's or 3 6's so this divine ratio 61.8% uh, Increase each time is Fibonacci, which we know are flowers, sunflowers, everything, trees, everything. Even the way the planets are stacked on top of each other, you have the sun 800,000 miles up, you have the moon 1.6 million miles up from the earth, and then we have Venus 1.6 million miles above that. So it's everything, the whole universe is conforming to this golden ratio including our known universe including us everything so here's just a bigger version just so i can explain it more clearly i have gone a little bit wide with this circle but the principle is still the same you've got the tropic of cancer in the center you have the equator and you've got the tropic of capricorn which should be a lotus leaf thickness out basically is it's just a little bit out so there's the cardinal directions which we can work out from where the stars are and where the sun is which sign it's in etc but when it comes to our lotus world our electromagnetic lotus world the anandashesh places however he does that the north becomes inverted and becomes the center becomes the uh, north pole of the magnet you know we have a magnetic center on earth which is the north pole we know this north south uh, west uh, east west so this is just the equator line going to the north moving northern creating the center northern hemisphere in a circle it's moving out to Libra back to um, Capricorn along the outside so it's all a magnet, it's a ring magnet it's magnetic energy you've got Manasatara doing the same thing as what's going on locally for us we're seeing through a electromagnetic uh, lotus field which is basically just bending the ether and allowing us to see what we're supposed to see. We see the universe as if it would be relative from Meru. That's what we see. That's why there's so many anomalies when you read the Bhagavatam, how between Manasa Mountain and, and us, why is Meru not in the way of the sun? The sun's 120 million miles away, so how does it actually create the light around us centrally when Meru is actually up here? It should be going around Meru. So we have these localized fields firmaments domes whatever you want to call them but it's electromagnetic it's all based on a ring magnet just like sacred circle the snake of life the ouroboros it's all coming from the sacred circle so yeah quite a Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. Because what I'm now going to do now, I'm actually going to draw it on a Gleason map. Which I know people have issues with the Gleason map, but this 
will give you a different perspective of what's going on. There's the vesica, there's this keep going around, but it's all based on the equator circle. Everything's based on the equator because that's the center of the whole thing. Already we can see how the inner pedals line up with the water and the outer pedals line up with the boundaries of our known world. The equator is obviously the equator line and you actually start to see uh, when I draw these on they line up exactly with the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. As it's doing the delta of the sun, the south path, you got the star doing the northern path, sun, moon, contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion. It's the pulse. Every six months we have this pulse, this um, vibration, this oscillation. So I was just explaining there, you've got the um, Cancer, Equator, Capricorn, all conforming perfectly to the flower of life, including the outer boundaries of the water and of the ice wall. We don't know anything beyond this ice shelf, the Arctic Circle. But all conforming to the flower of life. It's not accidental. which is all based on an antishesh, the snake of life, the flower of life, the seed of life. You know, the four elements, the movements of the sun, the, uh, the golden ratio. It's all Vedic cosmology, all coming from this one drawing, actually. This is where the ice shelf is here. It's actually another lotus petal thick, which is the same as what I was just showing. All resting on the head of an antishesh. So here we got, I was just showing the, um, the 666, the LCNI, because you got the Freemasons here with the triangle, the LCNI, the 666. If you join these lines up, you actually get the rectangles, which is the pyramid, which are the building, the pyramid. Or when you see the LCNI as a pyramid with the eye over the top, it's from this. The Star of David, which, the, which is a Vedic symbol that the uh, Zionists hijacked in the 1700s sometime. Um, Sacral Chakra, uh, 666. These guys know this stuff. They know how the world is working. And they're keeping it for themselves. But anyway, you've got the Triangle, you've got the old CNI, you've got the Star of David. And the uh, Ouroboros, actually, the snake guarding the flower of life. It's where the reptilian concept comes from. But the universe is actually works reptilian in the sense of the 1.618. And the way it moves, it moves along unseen, but it is moving along. I mean, the earth is moving along, but the whole universe is moving around and being created and controlled. So that's the 666. You can see right there, you've got the Freemasonry and the Zion, Zionists. The um, Vatican, the uh, Jesuits, or the Knights Templar, the Knights of Malta, the English Freemasons. Occultists, should I say. These are known as the American Freemasons. Over here, we would actually have the Zionists in the West with the water, the currency. And um, up in the north, actually, over in, that's just the cost of the magnetic field. Uh, the north being the Vatican, um, the Jesuits. These are the four ruling orders that use the 666. They use all this symbolism. And the next, the only other symbol that, not the only other symbol using, but another symbol that's important to them is the pentagram. And I'm going to show that next.